Let's get it. Let's get it. Woo! Where are my Detroit people at? I'm serious. I can't see you. So where are my Detroit people at? No. I'm from Detroit, baby. Jeremiko Edwards from Detroit, Michigan. Detroit is one of the hypest cities you can go to. Detroit, you can give a bum $5 and he swears he's not homeless anymore. <laughs> He'll say, man, you put me on, brother. You put me on. I'm thinking $5, okay. Detroit, I'm from Detroit, Michigan. When I was younger, I made a girl mad one time. I didn't have a car. So she keyed, she keyed the side of the bus I was riding. <laughs> That's Detroit, Michigan for you. I'm fired up to be here in Colorado. So growing up in Detroit, my parents have been married for over 50 years. So it was me and my three sisters. And people go, well, don't you, have a, don't you have a good childhood? Well, didn't you have a good childhood? I go, eh. Eh, ask some trauma, ask some trauma, y'all. So being from Detroit, parents being married over 50 years, in fifth grade, I had a stuttering issue. I would call my friend, I would call his, I would call his home, his mother would pick up the phone. His mother would hang up the phone because she couldn't hear anything. I was trying to get the word out. I'll call back, she hung up the phone again. I called back the third time. I got out high and that's it. And she said, boy, your friend Jeremiko's on the phone. Come get the phone. <laughs> That's traumatizing when you can't speak. My parents, they hired a coach. It was, it was about seven days. I went to this lady, seven days. And after seven days, she said, your brain moves faster than your mouth. So slow down when you talk and let your brain catch up. I said, how much did my parents pay you <laughs> for you to spend seven days with me and tell me that? It did help. But I'm thinking, it's the easiest thing in the world to make money in America. And so from there, so, that's, so that was a little trauma right there, right? Not being able to speak well. But my parents, I had loving parents, and they said, you know what? You may be on a public stage one day speaking, so we have to get your speech in order, right? <laughs> I couldn't get free lunch in school. Everybody else got free lunch in school. My father worked at a factory. So it was like he made, he made enough to where we weren't poor, but then I couldn't get free lunch in school, which is difficult, right? Because everybody had extra money for the chip machine, but I didn't. So my parents gave me a dollar for lunch and I didn't have any more money to get anything else. So everybody else got chips from the vending machine in school and I couldn't get anything. That's traumatizing. I learned then, I said, I don't like not having money for stuff. And to go, to, to go through eight years of not having money for what you want to have money for, that was traumatizing to me. Last thing that happened was I went to the factory. So after high school, I, did, I worked a couple other jobs, worked at CVS, Home Depot, and then my father said, get a good job in the factory. So I got a good job in the UAW with benefits factory. And I was a forklift driver. A forklift driver, you drive this big machine, you have to get a license for it. When there's something to pick up, when there's something up high, you go up high with the forks and get it. When there's something low, you go low with the forks and get it. Very simple job. I couldn't understand the environment though. I, I, was, I was dumbfounded on how, why am I in this building with no windows? To this day, I still can't figure out why I didn't have windows in that factory. I kept saying it was a prison. People, work, people who worked with me kept disagreeing with me, and I kept saying, wait a minute, there's no windows. We have 30 minutes for lunch. Prisoners get an hour for lunch. We got 30 minutes for lunch. I said, this is a prison. I kept wanting to get out the factory. The culture was bad. We had, we had uh, what do you call it, mandatory overtime. Do anybody know what mandatory overtime is? <laughs> It means no matter what you have going on, forget it. <laughs> and if you think you're gonna call off, you about to lose your job. <laughs> you about to lose your job. Get this thing. <laughs> Mandatory overtime, you cannot call off. You had to be there. And I, I'm thinking to myself, 
this cannot be life. This is traumatizing to me. On this movie named The Maze, it's like they were, they were caught in this little thing. It was this brick, brick wall all around them. It was this one guy, he kept wondering what was outside the wall. They kept saying, this is home, stay here, don't worry about what's out there. This is your home, we're your family. And he kept going, what's out there? I want to be a runner. I want to run out there. Now he finally did get free and he ran out there and he was able to free everyone in the maze. But everybody did not want to go free. Some people fought getting free out of the maze. It's a good movie. Check it out. It's called The Maze. And so here's what I consider trauma. Trauma is a false belief system that you develop from things that happen to you. So we all got some type of trauma. I'm going to help you today to get over that trauma. I had some false beliefs in my head that I had to change. But it just comes from things that happened when I was growing up, bad decisions that I made, just different things that happened, right? So it was just, it was just things in my head that I had to change coming into this business. And I'm grateful for being brought into this business by Stephen Davies because this business helped me get over these false beliefs, all right? So, somebody can roll. Somebody can roll to the next screen. Oh, okay. People say that time heals all wounds. That's, that's partly true. What I found is choice heals all wounds. If you, make a, if you make a choice to be forgiving, if you make a choice to do better, your wounds will be healed. Because a person can go through time and they could get more bitter. They could get more skeptical. So time doesn't necessarily heal all wounds. You have to make a choice. So these are four beliefs that I had to overcome. The first belief was, I believe that because of the color of my skin, I couldn't be as successful as everybody else. So where did this belief come from? I don't know. <laughs> to this day, I don't know. Nobody, nobody ever directly told me that because of the color of your skin, you cannot be successful. I think I heard it through TV or something like that. But that, coupled with the trauma from, you know, not having enough money growing up and all that stuff, it, it just became a part of me. So when I came into this business, I was thinking, I'll do okay, but I won't be super successful. I'll just do okay. And so, if you can go to the next slide, I appreciate it. Here's what I found out. Here's what I found out. You have to focus on what you can control. So what I figured out that you can control is your behavior, your behavior, your confidence, your mood, and who you hang around. Come on, talk about it, Jeremy. So that's what you can control. Now, your thing may not be the color of your skin. What may hold you back is being male or female, your age. Some people think their height holds them back. Whatever it is that you're battling with, this applies to you. I had to check my behavior. What I found is when I have good behavior, things go right for me. When I have bad behavior, bad things happen. Does that make sense? When I hang around bad people, bad things happen. When you hang around people that's doing good, good things happen. <laughs> Isn't that simple? Trauma, gone, just like that. See that? <laughs> so it was not the color of my skin, it was the content of my character. It was not the color of my skin, it was who I was hanging around. It was not the color of my skin, it was my attitude. It was not the color of my skin, it was my mood. It was, it was not the color of my skin, it was me not working on my confidence. So I had to take 100% responsibility for that and go, okay, so here's what I got to change. And so that's a false belief that I had to get rid of. When you have the choice to make a different decision, you are no longer a victim. Yeah. 
Now, for those who like to run in the victim Olympics, this is bad news. <laughs> this is bad news if you like to run in the victim Olympics. Ain't no coddling going on here. I never forget, I said, I, I told Stephen, I said, Stephen, I'm not making money. Stephen didn't say, so are you not making money because you're a black man in America? <laughs> Stephen said, how many dollars you make last week? I was like, so I'm not making money because of my work ethic. Got it, got it. And then I went out that week, after that conversation, I went out that week and I got, it was like $6,200 deposited in my account from the people who I helped. <laughs> Isn't that something? I'm thinking, okay, all right, let's go. So no, nobody's gonna coddle you in this business. I, I mean, especially as men, men don't need coddling anyway. Men need, men need accountability and goals. All right, so that's, that was one belief I had to get over. Number two, the number two belief that I had to break This one. Ooh, ooh. Sorry. Y'all need to see all that. Y'all need to see all that. All right, all right. If y'all can start that over. The number two thing I had to get over is not thinking I was good enough for this business. Not thinking that I could be good enough in this business. What did this affect, thinking that I'm not good enough? This affected my production. This affected me purchasing leads because I didn't think that I could produce enough from the money I spent on leads. This, product, this, this affected my recruiting or talking to people, hiring people, whatever you want to say. This affected that. If I don't think I'm going to be good enough, why would I talk to somebody else about the business? But here's a question. How many things did you not think you would be good at that you absolutely killed it. Think about everything in your past. Think about something that you were scared to do and you said, I'm not gonna be good and you absolutely killed it. That's why we like people who has had success in the past. If you can focus on that and you go, okay, I did this thing, you know, I'm, you can even take it all the way back to childhood. You, did, you never thought you would walk. You kept falling, you kept falling, and then you got it. So even if you have to go all the way back then, okay, go all the way back. But you gotta understand that mindset of I won't be good enough, it's holding you back. It held me back. Anything that's important to you, you're gonna be good at. So the question is, is growing a business important to you? Is getting free from your job important to you? Is taking care of your family important to you? Yes, it is. is buying the things that you want to buy important to you? Because of the trauma I had not having enough money, these things have to be important to me or I revert back. And then I'm going to cause my own trauma again. So you have to figure out what's important to you. And I promise you, you are going to say to yourself, okay, I'm good enough for this business. I'm good enough to recruit. I'm good enough to get $1,000 worth of leads, and I'm going to make $10,000 off this $1,000. I don't care, come hell or high water. So, the third belief that I had to overcome is thinking that I cannot grow my business fast. I promise you, you can change fast. I thought change took forever. But you can make a decision, like, like this weekend, we're all here, I'm so proud of y'all. You can make a decision this weekend and you can go back Monday and be a different person. I promise you, you can. I didn't think it could, I didn't think it could work like that. I thought that when I came into this business, I would attend every meeting and you know, I, I may have a little success. I may, I may hit 100,000, uh, maybe in about, uh, 20 years or so, you know, it'll, it'll come one day, right? But you got to understand, you can change fast. You can, we have people who come into this business and go literally from zero to half a million dollars in six months to a year. Right. 
you got to be careful who you hang around because they could develop, they could help you develop false beliefs. And one of the false beliefs, again, is you cannot grow fast, you cannot change fast. You can make a decision and change fast. We used to play cards. We play cards in Detroit. Some of the old heads, they always go, study long, study wrong. <laughs> study long, study wrong. <laughs> if you study too long, if you take too long to change, you won't change. If you take too long to change, you won't change. Study long, study wrong. You got to hang around winners. I wish I would have messed up faster. Knowing what I know now, I would rather move fast and mess up than slow down and take years to learn. If you're brand new and you're starting this business, make a mess. Go out and do something. I like hearing stories. I like hearing stories from, like off Shark Tank or any successful person. I like hearing stories of, I lost $500,000. I messed up, I lost this, I lost that, I lost a million dollars. I like hearing stories like that versus you're talking to a brand new person and, and they're like, I never failed the test in my life. And they're taking forever to get into licensing. They're taking forever to get through licensing because they're scared to fail a test. And I'm talking to people who lost $300,000, who lost $400,000. I would rather lose $400,000 and learn how to make 10 million than to never have failed anything and never get my insurance license, never get out of my job, never have the opportunity of freedom. So if you're new, understand, mess up fast. I promise you, nothing will happen to you. Just make a mess, your upline, we got you. <laughs> this is something I had to change. I it's, now, it's uncomfortable as everything. To make these changes, to make this change and mess up fast, you know, when we're used to just going slow over time, it will be uncomfortable. So if you have a habit of watching a lot of TV and you know that that's the only thing that's holding you back from making $300,000 in this business, <laughs> you got to understand, it will be hard not to watch Law & Order. It will be hard. It will be hard to not watch Sanford and Son <laughs> and pick up the phone and dial. I promise you it will be hard, but it will be worth it. And once you do it for so long, you'll be a different person and you won't have to struggle with that anymore. You'll be a more productive person. It's going to be hard, y'all. But just understand, you got to mess up fast. You got to change fast. All right. The last belief, not thinking that I deserve wealth or the good life. I had to change that belief. Did you know that you can be broke for so long that it gets comfortable? And no matter what opportunity comes your way, no matter what good things happen, you'll blow it just to go back to broke because you've been broke for so long. It was tough. When I come into this business, I had never touched, let me see, my, I got a deposit one time, it was like four, it, it was about a month into this business, I got a deposit for like $4,000. I had never touched that much money at one time, never. I didn't have my first steak until I was 16. My dad said, kids don't eat steak. <laughs> like, what do you mean kids don't eat steak? So we got a lot of chicken and hamburger growing up, you know? But, uh, you know, my daughter said, now we go to the best steak houses. Just, you know, it's just Ruth Chris. Eddie V's. I said, Daddy, I eat a bunch of steak now. Nah. <laughs> um, so, so, so understand that you, you don't want to be in a situation to where you're comfortable being broke. You have to fight against that. Working hard and breaking barriers will make you confident that you deserve wealth and a good life. Andy told me one time, I'll never forget it. Andy said, I, I said, Andy, I struggle with confidence that 
I can make a certain amount of money. I struggle with confidence that I'll ever have a jet one day. And he said, Bo, if you work harder, you wouldn't struggle with that. <laughs> I was like, so that's the secret. That's the secret to feeling like you deserve something is working harder. I'm not kidding. The harder you work, you will feel like you deserve everything. That's what people get that term. Well, rich people are cocky. It's like, well, hey, as hard as they work. If you work as hard as them, you'll be cocky too. <laughs> that is why I had to get uncomfortable to break that cycle of thinking. So me trying to go to the next level, which is partner in this business, right? I'm trying to get to that level. I have to get uncomfortable. So to get to this level, I had to get uncomfortable. Like I got teased a lot by the leaders and I thank the leaders in this business, Diane Lampy, Mike, Mike Leventovich, Steven, I, th I thank y'all for getting me uncomfortable. I used to wake up at nine o'clock, y'all. Who wakes up at 9 a.m.? They said, man, if you don't start getting up at 7 a.m., you'll never make any money. I said, ah, I don't know about that, it's tough. It's tough to get up early. I started getting up at 6.30, changed my life. That, the year that I started getting up at 6.30, I made $120,000 that year. And I was, I was piddling around 60, 70,000. And I was like, man, I can't break that $100,000 barrier. <laughs> so then it's like, boom, six figures. So now it's just like, all right, next level. So now it's like to be a multimillionaire, what do I need to change? How can I duplicate myself? So there's habits that I have to develop. I have to get myself uncomfortable. If you're brand new in this business, you have to be uncomfortable. So how many appointments have you ran in a day? If the most you've ran is three, I would say bump that up to six. If the most you've ran is six, bump that up to eight. You got to make yourself uncomfortable to break that false belief that you don't deserve wealth, that you don't deserve the good life. You have to make yourself uncomfortable. So y'all, listen, start analyzing your beliefs. Where did my beliefs come from? Where did I get this from? Anytime you feel like, well, that's them up there. I can never do that. When that thought comes, go, wait, wait, hold, hold on, hold on. Where did this belief come from? I promise you, you have people who love you. You have people who want you to succeed. Those are the people who you hang around and listen to. All right? Andy and Steven tells me all the time, you have too much talent. You have too much talent to be here. You need to be here. These are the people you need to hang around, people who say, you can be here. Not, not your uncle who works at Little Caesars. He's gonna tell you that it's okay to work with him. He's gonna tell you that life is good. He's gonna say, hey, come drink with me and my buddies on the corner. He's gonna say, hey, come over to my grandma's house. You're gonna get invited to every barbecue. You're gonna get invited to every funeral. I promise you. Hang around people that's doing something. I'm talking to my agents now, and I'm fired up that I see other people's belief systems changing, right? You see it happening to other people. I, I was talking to a, a lady in my group, and she was just thinking that she wasn't going to make New Zealand. And I said, fine, you don't make New Zealand. You go to any barbecue or whatever you're going to get invited to this summer and we'll be flying over you, like our plane to New Zealand will be flying over you. <laughs> Going to New Zealand while you're at the barbecue, twerking, jigging, doing whatever you gotta do. I promise you're gonna be dancing at this barbecue. While you're dancing at the barbecue, we're gonna be flying to New Zealand. So I had to change that belief. It's like you got, you got, to, do, you got to do big things, you gotta hang around big people in order for your life to change. So let's take 100% responsibility for our life. It's your fault. Everything that happened to you is your fault. It's your fault. Take 100% responsibility. Make the changes necessary. And y'all, let's all be at the top together. Let's change these false beliefs and let's all grow. Let's all make partner. Let's make as much, as much money as we want to make. And y'all, let's enjoy life together. All right, y'all. Jeremy Clay Edwards. Love you. Love you.